Do I come in and sort of cuddle in? I'll be a wee bit warmer. It's an excuse for an orgy. Come on in, you come. It's not as if you march. Just think, the days of Scotland, you'll just like brawl when there's a wee bit of sunshine on the snow, isn't it? That's pretty bolted, right enough. But look on the bright side, and the widgets didn't like it even more than we did. So it'll be a nice summer with you, widgets. Anyway, uh, I've got the, the short straw speaking first, and after me there's going to be Duncan, of course, and George, Jeebo. No, 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 and I'd uh, sung a few Scottish songs and this guy came up and decided that he was going to give me his opinion on how Scotland should uh, go forward. And he told me that, uh, in his opinion, that Scotland should shake off the sort of the old-fashioned tartan and heather and bagpipe image that we had. We should forget about everything that happened in the past. Stop wasting our time glorifying old battles and move forward into the future as a modern nation. He also made the point that St Andrew uh, was just not relevant in a modern nation because St Andrew was a 2,000 year old Christian saint and our country now is a multicultural country of which a large proportion uh, is just no religious beliefs whatsoever. So St Andrew is obviously irrelevant and so we should just ban him. So, he also told me that he felt he was every bit as patriotic as, as any of the Scots. So, I had to think for a wee moment because in a two minute conversation they'd just been their history, their culture, their identity and their religion. So I had to try and think what he was being particularly patriotic about and I couldn't figure that out at all. But I thought, no, nah, Ted, you've got to be reasonable about this. The guy's making some points, think about them. Um, so I thought, okay, I'll think about what he said. Now, last weekend, I was in Azerbaijan on the shores of the Caspian Sea, and I was there with a band, and we were playing at the Baku Caledonian Society, St Andrew's Ball. And the taxi driver drove us down to the venue. But he couldn't get right to the venue, he could only get to the opposite side of the square, which is about 200 yards away. To walk that 200 yards took us over half an hour, because every few steps we were stopped by Azeris who wanted to have their photographs taken with the Scotsmen and the Celts. Many more of them just shouted Scotlandia and waved at us. Every single one of them greeted us with a smile and left with a smile. I can't think of any other nation on this planet that has an identity that gives that instant recognition and affection. So as far as Ben and Nat's concerned, no thanks. I'll keep that, thank you very much. That sits very happily with me. Here, here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he also <coughs> said that we should just forget about the past and think towards the future. So I thought, well, you know, I really appreciate what my mum and dad did for me to give me a start in life. And I'm sure that everybody here did the same with their parents. And I know that my mum and dad appreciated what their grandparents did. And so it went back through history. So where do you draw a line where you stop appreciating what your forefathers did? How can you do that? I don't think that line exists. And he also thought, or I also said that we should stop glorifying old battles. Well, earlier this, this month was Remembrance Sunday. Now I can't put into words the admiration that I feel for these guys who are still out in Afghanistan and Iraq just now, facing death, mutilation, just in horrible circumstances. <coughs> Whether I agree with the war is a totally different issue, that's got nothing to do with it. But my respect for these guys is the same as thousands of people that stood in remembrance sundry and gave their respects to them and to the lists of names that stood in the war memorials for the First and Second World War. So where do we draw a line and stop forgetting about them? I mean, let's face it, there's nobody for the First World War that's still alive. So do we forget them? No, damn right we didn't forget them. 
But further back than that, do we still remember the guys that stood in the thin red line? Culloden, Bannockburn, Stirling Bridge. Each and every one of these guys was in a similar circumstance. Their loss was none, none less. They had wives, kids, mothers. There's no less respect due to them. So do we forget? Where do we draw a line there? There's not a line there as far as I'm concerned either. These guys died given there today so that Scotland would have a tomorrow. This is their tomorrow. Without it, we wouldn't be able to march forward as a modern nation into the future. And his final point was that St Andrew was irrelevant. At least he knew who St Andrew was. He was, of course, one of Jesus' disciples who decided that he wasn't fit to be crucified on a cross the same shape as Jesus', so asked that it be turned on his side, which is why St Andrew's cross is diagonal rather than upright. And 500 years after St Andrew's death, and 500 years are a hell of a long time in a world where there's new media, but that white diagonal cross appeared in the sky just in the road at Elshinford as the Scots lined up to face the un-English force that was there to try and dominate Scotland. And they recognised that white cross as the cross of St Andrew. And it spurred them on to win a great victory against overwhelming odds. And they decided from that day on they would carry that white cross on the blue background of the sky. And that cross has become our banner, our flag. It flew at Stirling Bridge, it flew at Bannockburn. It flies throughout this world, everywhere Scotsmen go. And it's recognised not as a religious symbol, but as the banner of a proud nation, our nation. And one day very soon, that banner will fly outside the United Nations building, declaring our equality with every other nation in this And one day soon it will also retake its rightful place on the flagpoles above Edinburgh and Stirling Castle. And that can't be too far away. So in case you're wondering what happened to the guy in the pub, I thank him very much indeed for his thought-provoking opinions. And I bade him farewell and I, I wished him a traditional Scottish toast. said, Slange. He didn't have to go with a pish. <laughs>